the project that I've been working on uh, as a graduate student is called Thesis. And so it's a thermal camera for exploration, science, and imaging spacecraft. And it's an instrument that we're going to fly on a mission called PROX-1. And PROX-1 is a mission that's being led out of the Georgia Institute of Technology. And we're developing the instruments here at ASU. We also have some other partners we're working with. It's the whole project is essentially sponsored by the Air Force. There's a company called Ecliptic that's building this CubeSat right here that I'll talk a little bit about. And that's also being sponsored by the Planetary Society. And so we really have universities, the Air Force, so the government, and these small startup companies all working on this project together. But I kind of put it, you saw probably in my, in my title, the three words that I'll talk about are the inspiration, the investigation, and the, and the implementation about how to make a project like this possible. So let's start off with the inspiration. How, how did I like decide, hey, I want to do, do something like this? And it really comes down to motivating others to explore. So somebody motivated me somehow to want to do something like building an instrument and sending out into space. So where did that start? My very first day of college at ASU, I walked into my very first class, and my now advisor, Phil Christensen, said, your project is to use our camera that's in orbit around Mars, right here, the Themis instrument on the right, that's on board the Mars Odyssey spacecraft to take your own image and conduct an investigation at Mars. And I'm like 18, this is like day one of college. We're like, we're gonna take pictures of Mars? Like, it's not just like, you know, doing problems out of a textbook. We're literally gonna take, you know, thousand dollar images, whatever, of Mars. So I thought that was really, really awesome. Got me hooked from literally minute one of college. And so our freshman group took this image right here. And so that's visible image 213540006 of an cr impact crater on the surface of Mars. And I thought this was just like the coolest thing that like any freshman could ever possibly do. And so I wanted to eventually do some projects of my own to uh, conduct an investigation. So investigation. Let's come up with a project that we can do. And that really starts with asking questions and then conducting some type of an experiment to learn new knowledge. So the investigation that was provided to us was to work on this mission called PROX-1. And it really, there's two kind of elements to this project. The first was basically uh, the PhD thesis of Dr. David Spencer. And that is to test automated trajectory control for proximity operations using relative orbital elements. That's the title of uh, his PhD thesis. And what exactly does that mean? Well, we want to try to have this satellite on the right autonomously navigate around this satellite on the left. And it's going to do it all by itself. And so we at ASU are building the instruments that are going to sense this CubeSat in order to provide the input for the satellite to operate. And so the other partnership of this, again, is working with my advisor, Phil Christensen, in order to determine the performance of these microbolometer arrays in high radiation environments. And so it's really a partnership between multiple institutions in order to test the navigation of this satellite and to try and work on characterizing the performance of these uh, microbolometer arrays. We started this several years ago in order to provide new technologies for future missions. So, what are the three goals of this project? What are we really trying to investigate? The first one, again, as I've kind of stated a couple times now, is to demonstrate the proximity operations. So, this is a, an image that Georgia Tech Institute of Technology has put together, and it's showing our satellite basically rendezvousing around the smaller CubeSat in the bottom right. The prototype that we made for the 2012 competition finals is shown in the bottom left. So we have this infrared camera and a visible camera. And we were able to take these images shown in the bottom right. So has anybody ever seen an infrared camera before? Infrared image? Maybe one, a couple? OK. So basically, we're looking at temperature. And it's really, really cool, because we're so used to seeing things in the visible light. right? All the, all the light you're seeing, the photons that are hitting your eyes, that are bouncing off of me, coming from the light, that's all in the visible. 
but in infrared, we can see temperature. So all of us in here are essentially like little mini suns or light bulbs in the infrared. And if we had this camera scanning around, you could just, you'd all be glowing. If, if you got up out of your seat and you walked away, we could see the outline of your body still in the infrared. It's, it's kind of a little weird. So every time you sit in a seat after everyone, you know, you're in someone else's like thermal butt print or whatever. It's kind of weird. It's <laughs> kind of Anyway, so the first, again, the first goal that we are trying to do with Thesis, our instrument, is to help Prox1 do these proximity operations. The second goal that we want to do is to help verify the deployment of LightSail B. So you may have seen in the news, there's this project called LightSail by the Planetary Society, and they want to test these CubeSats that will unfurl these massive solar arrays and basically use the sun as a uh, kind of like wind, the solar wind, to propel the spacecraft. So the first spacecraft was successful. And the second spacecraft we're going to deploy and try to actually take an image of it. So this is an image that NASA put together. You know, it, it's kind of photoshopped. But the real image right here is what we're going to hopefully try to take. So if it works, we'll have this image for real. OK, and the third thing is to conduct Earth remote sensing. So if everything goes right, I would really like to take some images of the Earth in infrared to try and investigate some of these really interesting scientific problems. We want to look at the Gulf Stream. How is it changing? Glacier monitoring. You know, we know climate change is happening. And can we help to make some measurements of how the ice is melting? Do geology mapping, doing feature identification of objects. I mean, today, you know, we, we know that in the news a lot, some of these airplanes are disappearing. And I really think that there's no reason why, with the technology we have, that this should ever happen again. Urban heat island mapping. As our cities are growing out, how are we changing the, the uh, local environments, uh, thermal environments? And of course, deforestation mapping. So there's lots of different scientific applications that we can get students to work on uh, at universities with these type of instruments. So the implementation. Basically, how do we make this happen? So here are two pictures of the cameras that we have finished developing at ASU. So we have a visible camera here on the left, and this is the infrared camera on the right. And so in geology, we're always taught to have something for a scale in the image. So this is our little pocket knife there. And you can see that the infrared one is a lot larger than the visible camera. And, so, and that is really because the infrared camera is at much longer wavelengths of light, wavelengths that we can't see with our eyes. But we are required to have bigger cameras in order to see in the infrared. So taking some of these images, does anybody know what, what, what that object is we're looking at? OK. So in the left, that's a visible image. In the right, it's an infrared image. This is the first image pair that we took in the lab. I'm very excited when it all finally worked. And that is a soldering iron. And so on the left, you can see, you know, it's like just part of what's all in the scene. But on the right, it's very, very bright and visible because it's, it's a couple hundred degrees of soldering iron. And in the infrared, it totally is illuminated within the scene. So here's some images we took in the field. You can see on the left, again, visibly, what are we looking at? That's kind of our calibration target for the visible images. And on the right, you can see kind of in the middle, that box right there, that's our target that is supposed to emulate the CubeSat that we're taking an image of. And it's 10 by 30 centimeters across. So one of the students that's helping me on this project, Amber Kesky, is actually kind of to the left. You can see her a little bit. And she was helping me work on this. We did this experiment in July, and it was like, you know, 115 degrees out, right? Very, very hot. <laughs> and you can see anything that's bright white in the image is a higher temperature. Anything that's kind of like blacker in the image is cooler. And you can see the white line that's going straight across. Those are the sand volleyball pits in the middle of the recreation fields at ASU. And you know, in the summertime, if you barefoot walk on the sand, how it kind of burns your feet. Yeah, as you can see, it is very, very hot in this infrared image. Okay, so 
we were able to get our cameras to work finally after a lot of troubleshooting. And here's a, a couple other images I wanted to show real quick. These are some infrared images that we took with our handheld kind of commercial infrared camera out to California where this company called Ecliptic is working on the light sail. And so on the left, this is their prototype, kind of a small version that they can take out in the field. And we we're taking some images of it just to see what it kind of looks like. You can see in the top left, it says negative 33C. Negative 33C. So zero C is freezing, right? So why, why would it be negative 33C? That doesn't make sense. Well, it turns out that uh, in the infrared, this, these mylar solar panels are almost like mirrors. We can't really see the temperature of them directly. And so we are basically just imaging space. And so the, the coldness of space, very, very, very cold, is uh, essentially what we're looking at in that image. But on the right, we are doing some testing of seeing how the temperature behaves of the solar panels that we're going to be imaging. And so that's a heat gun on the right, and we heat it up to 87 C. So right, 100 is boiling. So it's almost boiling in there, and it's below freezing on there. So I've talked a little bit about the inspiration of how I got interested in doing this project. And I've talked a little bit about the investigations we're going to do. And I've also talked a little bit about the implementation. So that's kind of like my framework for understanding this project. But the element that kind of, the thread that binds it all together that I want to mention real quickly is really the people that make it all happen. The people are the most important part of this project. And so just to show a few snapshots of getting to work with some of the, my peers on this project, it's been really, really fun to work with the Georgia Tech students across the country. So this is... Kyle Scott on the left, and he's the lead structural engineer. So his job is to make the, the satellite. How does it all work? So over the entire summer, we're going back and forth on the designs, the CAD files, and then getting to go out there, bring the instruments out, and the bolt holes line up, it fits, it works. It's just, it's a really, really remarkable experience to get to, to, get to work on something very hard with people and just to see it all kind of finally come together and work. In the right, you can see Jack Bush in the, on the far, far right. So he's in charge of the power systems, so making sure that the instruments get powered up. And I'm in the middle with the instruments, and Lewis is on uh, the left there, and he's working on all the computer software. And so getting to, again, work across the country on this code and get it all to work and actually see the computers talking together, it's, it's really a remarkable experience. So getting to work with motivated peers is one part of it, and kind of in keeping in theme with this event, the other half is getting to work, getting to work with very experienced mentors that are willing to share their insights and knowledge. And so these are the uh, mentors that I have uh, been working with at ASU. My advisor, Phil Christensen, Bill Donald, Greg Mihal, Sada Anwar, and Dan Pelham. And these guys are really the best in the business at building infrared instruments that go to other planets. And you can see OTES in the middle, that's an instrument that's gonna be going to uh, uh, an asteroid in the next few years. And so really getting to learn from some of the best and work with peers, that, that kind of parallel process I think is very, very exciting. So my suggestion to all of you, if you want to you know, do some really cool investigation and implement it somehow, and then kind of come full circle after you're inspired, inspire others is to really find amongst yourself some really dedicated peers and get, make some fun project happen. <laughs> All right, thank you very much.